While Italy's north is in the grips of a health emergency brought on by the coronavirus, <laughs> the south is confronting a crisis of its own, a ruthless new mafia. This kind of a Nigerian mafia is peculiar in this place. Sex, drugs and people smuggling. Are you still scared of them? No. Why would I be scared of them? The Nigerians have arrived. Has the Italian mafia met its match? Non si può uscire tranne che con la morte. Are you scared? Ho paura di continuare a vivere così. place like this exist in Italy. We're just a stone's throw away from the Amalfi Coast and yet there hasn't been a war here or a flood or a fire or an earthquake. Instead, Castel Volturno has been the product of sheer neglect. This is a lawless wasteland abandoned by the state. What makes this town different is that it's said to be the headquarters of a new emergent mafia, one that's coming over on the boats from Africa. Do you think you were in the hands of the mafia? Yes, I was actually in the hands of the mafias. Italian mafia or Nigerian mafia? Nigerian mafias. Nigerian mafias. Yes. Only two years ago, Joy Ezekiel was just like these girls, running for their lives when they see our camera. On the only road in and out of Castel Volturno, their madams forced them to sell sex day and night. They've been tricked and traded for large sums of money, often by their own families, working with the Nigerian Mafia. All oh, they know is money. You weren't even... They even changed my name. They changed my name. I was not bearing my name. They changed everything. So I was like living a life for someone else. It wasn't me anymore. I was in the shadow of myself. Just like a living dead, I should say. A safe distance from Castel Volturno, we meet Joy for lunch. She's among the 80% of Nigerian women in Italy the UN says are trafficked by the Nigerian Mafia. It's the first time Joy has told her story. Whenever this car came to take us, take us to the bush, I don't know who I'm going with. I don't know who is this person. What does he have for me? If he's going to beat me up, if he's going to kill me, because there was nobody there. Because they can just come with the car. How much the price? Sometimes five euros, 10 euros. Did they always pay you? Sometimes, no. There was sometimes they'll come, they'll show you a gun, they won't pay. They will do what they want to do, they will leave. We are from ABC Australia. My name's Emma. Australia. It's too dangerous for Joy to return to Castel Volturno, so another former prostitute agrees to go undercover to show how the Nigerian Mafia controls the women at traffics. Oh, well, you, pay, you are now recording. All right. To protect them, we don't reveal their identities. You're going to pay 35,000 euros yeah. and you don't know how you will pay. How long... This young woman says her madam is demanding nearly $60,000 before she'll set her free. Oh, my sister, I love you. I want to help I'm you. Scared. No, no, don't be scared. No, no, me, all you. right, all right, all right. There's no problem. I was one like you before. I was deceived like you. 
You send the money to Nigeria. Do you take any oaths with them? Yes. Oaths, or juju. We call it or juju. Yes. You swear. The, your mother used you to swear. Yes. That, that what? If I do not pay the money, I will die. If you do not pay her money, you will die. Before she left Nigeria, 23-year-old Joy was also forced into a so-called juju ceremony by her family's Pentecostal pastor. The woman promised her a new life in Italy, food and lodgings, and a job as a hairdresser. Joy took a blood oath and was told if she betrayed those looking after her, she or a family member would die. So I thought maybe it was a normal thing. I did it, they cut small part of my hair. It's the private part, my own piece and other things. I cut it and they use a fowl, a chicken, just cut it with the blood to push my head and every other thing. That was how you These voodoo rites bond Nigerian women to secret and ruthless organised crime groups known by names like Black Axe. They're just kind of cultists or brotherhood coming together fighting for no reason, just to have power, just to have group, just to kill, happy to kill. They don't pity anyone. There is no pity. No pity. There is no pity if you do misbehave or you, you're tired, you can't continue anymore, they will just bring their gun and shoot, kill the person. Joy's dreams of La Dolce Vita started to sour shortly after she left her home in Benin City, Nigeria, to travel 4,000 kilometres through the Sahara to Libya and then on to Italy by boat. In Libya, she says she was raped by seven men in one night. In Italy, her Nigerian madam showed no mercy. Because when I came, I was actually pregnant. I remember saying that I was actually pregnant and uh, four months. But she made me remove it too. So I was forced to remove the pregnancy and with blood and everything, I have to go to the streets. Was it a doctor? Oh, it's a doctor. At home, not in the hospital. An African man. Inside his house. That's where they do it. That's it. And you had to go straight out to work? Yeah. La prostituzione, che è parte fondamentale e gestita dalle donne all'interno della mafia nigeriana, sono i vertici, sono donne, che comandano poi uomini eh, come soldati. Roberto Saviano has been in hiding for almost 13 years. His book Gamora blew the lid on the operations of one of Italy's main mafia rings, the Camorra. Now it wants him dead. Roberto agreed to meet us in a secret location where he's protected by his security detail. The Camorra is the presiding mafia power in Naples and in Castel Volturno. He tells us how one of its clans is operating in tandem with the Nigerians. Quella zona eh, è stata data dalle organizzazioni italiane alla gestione della mafia nigeriana. È stata una concessione. Innanzitutto non era più utile all'organizzazione mafiosa camorristica eh, dei Casalesi il controllo strada per strada di Castelvolturno. Perché? Perché c'è una comunità migrante enorme, una comunità africana enorme, che vogliono essere gestita dalla mafia nigeriana. Secondo, la mafia nigeriana paga le organizzazioni italiane per stare lì. Roberto calls Castel Volturno an African city on the Mediterranean. But it wasn't always. It used to be a summer playground for the southern Italian elite. But they fled when the Camorra ground this place down. 
It's now somewhere people go to hide. Almost half the town's population of nearly 50,000 are undocumented migrants. La mafia nigeriana si è installata, come raccontavamo, sfruttando il flusso dei migranti arrivati per i pomodori, sfruttando un intero territorio abusivo. Cooperation was forged between the Nigerians and Italians after a bloody turf war 12 years ago. Reminders of the carnage are everywhere. 122 bullets were fired, six Africans were killed. Now the Camorra lets the Nigerian Mafia base its European drugs and prostitution networks here, and it takes a cut. Nessuna organizzazione criminale in Italia può esistere senza alleanze e permessi con le organizzazioni italiane. Una percentuale dei loro affari va alle organizzazioni italiane e, soprattutto sul narcotraffico, i rapporti tra le organizzazioni, soprattutto la Camorra, sono molto prolifici. The Pineta Grande sees more drug mills than any other hospital in Italy. The health system is free for all, even the undocumented migrants. Excuse me, have you any document with pictures? Delia, this is for you to see that you have a document, but not here. Can So this is a CT scan, simple CT scan without contrast. Dr. Giuseppe Avitabile is a radiologist here. He's stunned by the enormity of the drug problem. Firstly, we uh, were young, young men, African people. Uh, they, they were used as mule. And now we are trying to, we are uh, seeing even women. These eggs are like, uh, they can contain like uh, 10, 20 grams of cocaine, highly concentrated in this, in this stuff. And uh, for every person, we cannot recognize like 30, 40 eggs in the body. So the total amount is like uh, 400, five, 500 grams of cocaine in the body of these people. Because if uh, only one of these eggs breaks, uh, the people can get, get an overdose in some minutes. It's very, the risk is very high and uh, a lot of people died for this risk. The hospital is the only site in Castel Volturno that's being built up rather than run down. $130 million is being spent here. When the Camorra found out, it wanted its share. <laughs> Vincenzo Schiavone is the hospital's owner. When he refused the Mafia's demands, they blew up his car. Le mie denunce hanno contribuito a, a ridurre non poco e a, a causare diversi arresti su questo territorio, a fare un po' di pulizia su questo. E dal 2007-2008 sono oramai 12 anni che vivo sotto scorta. Vincenzo takes us to what used to be his favorite beach club. He used to go swimming here with his family. Ti senti minacciato anche da adesso dalla mafia nigeriana? Li abbiamo visti gli effetti. Sono venute delle donne con eh, la pancia aperta, quindi con l'intestino da fuori. Sono venute delle persone con, con, colpite con il macete in testa, ammorsi. Sono veramente terribili. Sono, effettivamente violenti, di una violenza a volte tribale. Vincenzo despairs at how the government has deserted this once promising part of the Italian Riviera. All that prospers here now is the black market. The 
the sprawling headquarters of Italy's anti-mafia intelligence agency, the DIA, sits just outside Rome. It names the Nigerian mafia as a growing and violent scourge. What sort of a threat does the Nigerian mafia pose in Italy? When we talk about the criminality of the Nigerian, we talk about mafia. Why do we talk about mafia? Because it has some traits close to the mafia Italian. The judgment, the sense of appartenance, the capacity to make cohesion, l'omertà, cioè l'assoluta riservatezza. Quando si entra nell'organizzazione non si può uscire tranne che con la morte. The team of senior analysts and detectives who work here are exclusively dedicated to hunting mafia and the Nigerian connection. Organised crime is now Italy's biggest enterprise, worth even more than Fiat. These investigators say the Mafia generates income of $250 billion a year. For Giuseppe Governale, a Sicilian, the fight against the Mafia is personal. In the years that you've been the head of intelligence head of anti-mafia. Have you ever felt discouraged by the enormity of the task? No, I don't have enthusiasm, I need energy. I had the opportunity to do what I wanted to do when I was little. And then when I started in a period where there was a death on the streets almost every day in Palermo. And when people say this, it gives me the battery, the battery, to do something. I'm there, I look at the camera. Director Governale keeps a photo on his desk of himself as a nine-year-old. Director Governale keeps a photo on his desk of himself as a nine-year-old. He's with the local police chief, a man he idolised as a child. Shortly after this moment was captured, the policeman was killed by the mafia, blown up in a car bomb attack. Director Governale was born in Palermo, the capital of Sicily and the birthplace of Italy's oldest mafia. Cosa Nostra. Like all Sicilians, he knows the brutality behind the beauty of this place. On Palermo's waterfront, an iconic image boldly remembers two celebrated anti-mafia prosecutors. Giovanni Falcone and Paolo Borsellino, murdered by the mafia in 1992. Decades on, this city is now said to be the other main hub of the Nigerian Mafia. Nelle quartieri popolari di Palermo, dove questo tipo di criminalità è presente, eh, ha determinato anche paura nei confronti di queste persone da parte di appartenenti alla Mafia italiana. Palermo's Ballero street market, full of colour and culinary quirks, doesn't feel like a place where danger lingers. But among all the bustle, there's the hustle. The most lucrative trade here is in narcotics. New arrivals from Africa who aren't granted asylum are drawn to Balero to eke out a living in the shadow economy. They're easy prey for mafia recruiters. So I'm here with Jacob, which isn't his real name. Uh, he's asked me to protect his identity because it's only been six weeks since he was released from jail, having served 18 months for drug dealing. Now, it's not a life he particularly wants to return to, but at the moment he's in a bind. He doesn't see much of an alternative.
he agreed to talk to us only if we changed his voice. I was cooking drugs for them. Cooking the drugs? Yeah. What sort of drugs? It's called crack. Crack cocaine. I feel pressure because I don't have any job to do. Some people who know me, they are calling me to do it for them. I refuse because I don't want to do it again. Like so many others, Jacob has no passport, no job and no prospects. But the pressure to get back into the drug game isn't only coming from the Nigerians. The person at the top, yeah. were they African or Italian? It was always an Italian. As a foreigner, you don't get to commit high crimes like he was born here. It's his country. Authorities say black acts snuck into Ballaro during boat arrivals in the 80s and 90s. Cosa Nostra has now struck an unholy alliance with the Nigerians, charging them pizzo, protection money, to operate on Cosa Nostra land. I mafiosi italiani e gente con un altissimo indice di pericolosità. Per ottenere il rispetto significa che hanno dato una uh, paventato la possibilità di esercitare un'eguale misura di violenza, perché lì tutto si misura non con il diritto, <laughs> ma si misura con la capacità di esprimere violenza in fieri. An African Ballaro resident agreed to help us reveal the Nigerian Mafia's operations, but only if we keep his identity secret. He takes a hidden camera into one of the area's 30 or so brothels. They call them connection houses. Sex isn't the only thing for sale here, you can also buy alcohol and drugs, but only Africans are allowed in. 35. Listen to me. One gram of heroin and pare. 45. No, 35 euro. No problem. No problem. Okay, give me 30 minutes. I'm coming. Okay, bye. When Nigerian sex workers are not in Palermo's connection houses, their madams force them onto the streets. We're cutting through a park on the outskirts of Palermo. It's, as you can see, enormous. It's called La Favorita, and it is a favourite haunt of local men looking for sex. The price of sex with these trafficked women is less than $10. It can take them years to pay off their madams. How have you managed to distinguish this as mafia activity as opposed to any other sort of crime? Perché sono organizzati, hanno un capo hanno delle sigle per individuare le mansioni, per esempio hanno un MOD, un Minister of Defense in Italia. Pensi un po'. We track down the man the DIA refers to as the Nigerian Mafia's Minister of Defense. He's 27-year-old Mohamed Abubakar. He was held in custody for three years on charges of being a Black Axe ringleader. I was accused, but uh, I'm not a member of Blackers. I never, I never heard anything about Blackers. I don't know anything about Blackers. I was uh, just accused. La fuga, loro si mettono in intimità nel divano. A quel punto arriva il marito. 
Foreign correspondent was given rare access to film inside Palermo's city court, where Mohammed was recently acquitted of mafia involvement. Another 12 African men are still on trial, all accused by one informant, not of specific crimes, but of belonging to a mafia group. The Nigerians are the first foreign mafia to be tried under Italy's anti-mafia laws. But Palermo's prosecutors are finding it hard to make the charges stick. Five Nigerians have already been acquitted. These men are appealing convictions from a lower court. Defence lawyer Cinzia Pecoraro is adamant the whole court process is a sham. Cioè io ci credo veramente che non c'è la mafia a Palermo, la mafia nigeriana, perché ho vissuto quegli anni e so cosa vuol dire la mafia quella vera. The legal system is struggling to prove the Nigerians are in fact mafia, but Italy's homegrown mafia is in no doubt. This hidden camera footage captured in jail shows crime bosses and brothers Giuseppe and Giovanni Di Giacomo discussing just that. Back in safe territory, an hour away from Castel Volturno, Joy Ezekiel is enjoying her new life, making and selling African homewares. She's working with a group of nuns who've rescued 600 trafficked women in the region. After spending 12 harrowing months as a sex slave, Joy reported her Nigerian captors to police. The shop is called New Hope, and that's exactly what Joy has now. With a job she loves, in a country she's proud to call home, she's even gone back to school. The only thing that makes me happy is that I'm free today. It's behind me now. Even if sometimes I know my, whenever I go to bed, I find it difficult to sleep. But I just let it go. Like, life goes on. It has to. Life goes on. What are your dreams, Joy? My dreams in life is helping less privileged other guests that have passed through such kind of experience to help them out, to give them courage and hope for the future. One man who will never be free from the Mafia is Roberto Saviano. È raro che sei in parco così? Un po', così. un po' sì, infatti... <ride> cioè, ogni tanto riesco a farmi delle passeggiate, ma stai sempre un po'... Strano, eh, non è che mi sento in pericolo, però è strano. Five plain-clothed policemen are watching Roberto around the clock. He's determined to keep exposing Italy's underbelly and how it interacts with the new... Nigerian mafia. Pronunciare una verità sapevo in qualche modo che potesse metterti a rischio. Um, non credevo di ricevere una condanna a morte. Quando un soldato decide di partire, 
per la guerra, sa che torna vivo o torna morto, ma non mette in conto di essere ferito, e quindi né vivo né morto. È esattamente quello che mi è successo. Io non immaginavo che potesse esserci una posizione media così terribile, né vivo né morto. Roberto doesn't know what his future looks like, except that he'll never stay quiet. To be silent, he says, is to be complicit.